you know, basically, you know, um, you know, the first half, uh, you're pretty good defensively. You give up, basically, they have 20, they had 25, that's what they had. You got to tip in at the buzzer to make it 25. So defensively, we're really good. You know, offensively, you know, you have 10 turnovers, uh, 11 that first half. Um, and when it's in a when it's in a, a possession possession game, boy, it's, it's it puts a lot of pressure on you. You know, the second half, um, you come out and you basically have what, five turnovers, really four turnovers. To the last eight seconds, Charles gets a turnover on that free throw, right? That go, goes down as a turnover. Lane Valley goes as a turnover. So we really had four turnovers the last 20 minutes. You know, shot the ball 60%. And Brad, you were there. Uh, we had uh, had our opportunities. Had our opportunities up three with a minute, whatever it was to go. And had our opportunities uh, tie a game with, was that 40 seconds? Yeah. You know, ball went up. Ball went out on us. Um, when you question, you know, we should be going to the foul line in those tight situations, uh, but we weren't. And same with the last play of the game. You know, we get it where we want it. Felt like it could have been a three-point play. Felt like it needs to finish it. Got it where we want it and just didn't finish it. So um, Old Dominion stepped up and made two shots when they had to make shots. You know, Green makes that three and Green makes that two-pointer. When they're down three, makes a three. Got us in rotation. You know, Tavion and Connie uh, uh, fail a little bit on Caver's drive. Um, Monte ro rotates over to pick up Caver, who was wide open. You know, choose your poison. You leave Caver wide open or you leave Green wide open. And again, Green jumps up and makes a shot. So, you know, give them credit. but. Uh, he's very apparent. We we had our opportunities to close out that game again, didn't close it out. UAB uh, ranks fifth in the conference in offensive rebounds, third in rebound margin. We need to keep them off the boards this game. Well, you know, it's like the last few games hadn't been our strength, where for most a good part of the year we've been pretty good there. But, you know, we give Old Dominion, I think, had 18 offensive rebounds, way too many rebounds. Um, you got to find ways to eliminate those things. Um, you know, the first game here, I think he had eight, eight, off, eight offense rebounds. Um, so, you know, they're playing well. Um, I know the game here before, kind of like go to Minion a little bit the first half, you know, just didn't make some shots. They, they played zone, set in the zone, and stayed in the zone. And somewhere along the way, you got to make some shots. And, it, and it's tough. Even though Dominion, we make two threes. And they make uh, nine threes or seven threes difference. That's 21 points difference. And when you're in a, a one possession grind game, uh, that makes it difficult. You know, I know we scored a bunch more points in the paint. I think it was like 32 to 12. But you have to to have a chance. You know, you got we got to jump up and make some shots. As simple as this game is, uh, it's hard. It's hard to you know, offset making two and someone makes nine. And again, you better be very good in that paint. Well, we were pretty good. They gave us a chance to do it. Same way with old uh, UAB. I know the first game here, I guess we were basically make two until the last two minutes of the game. I think we make four when the game's county, county over. Uh, and I see no reason to believe uh, why would they change what they're doing when it worked for them. So we anticipate you know, seeing a lot of zone again. Um, and only so many times you can throw that thing to the baseline or get open shots. You know, looking back on the game here, there was a bunch of open shots here. Uh, just didn't go. Uh, I know Jarrett was one for 11. Uh, he's a better shooter than that. Uh, he's going to shoot 11. He's going to make three or four of them. And he had, he had good looks here. Just didn't go. I know Tavion didn't score until the last two minutes here. Uh, we need Tavion scoring for the last two minutes. Uh, so uh, we know it won't be easy, uh, but we got to make some shots. Uh, and we got to be good to go down there and win. Uh, Zach Ryan kind of coached the last game. What do you 
What are you going to do differently? To well, he can't get 24 points and that's win. He had 24 points here, right? Uh, first thing you got to be able to do, you got to keep him out of that lane. Easier said than done, but you got to do it. You got to find different ways to do it. Uh, I think he scored 22 points against man and two against zone here. Uh, so uh, zone kept him out of the lane a little bit. We got to do a better job in man keeping him out of that lane uh, on that ball screen. We just got to do a better job doing that because he's kind of the head of their snake and the key to their team. Hey Brad, I'm gonna look for somebody to come off that bench, give us some energy. I mean, we need some, we need some energy. We need somebody I can add to. And if it's adding to energy-wise, that's adding to. And you know, I made my mind up going into that game. Uh, we haven't been getting a lot of that consistently. Um, those other guys, uh, Moo will bring energy. He talks, talking is energy. And like you said, he got five rebounds in that game. So that's adding to. And that's a toughness category. Uh, you go on a road and get five rebounds. You need some guys bringing some energy. And he added to. And he'll we'll continue to go with him and play. Yes, sir. And looking at the bench, what does Delano's role You know, um, we need him to step up and, you know, add more to. You know, be tougher in some areas. Uh, you know, that just wasn't a game that I felt we were comfortable, comfortable with, with the, you know, the physicalness and the toughness of that game. And it was a one-possession game, and uh, I just really wasn't comfortable where it was at at the time. So, but it's very obvious. Any of those guys on that bench, there's not a whole lot of them. We need them all to add to some. Uh, as I've said so many times, we need Galen to come in and add to, you know, he's – uh, he does at times, and there's times he doesn't. We need him to step up and be consistent. That we, you know, that we see in practice, that we see in practice. You just don't see it in the game every day and every time. And we all know what Jake's role is. And, again, come in and play hard. You know, you know, come in and play hard, number one. And, you know, if you get a shot, shoot it with confidence. How did the want to react to not playing on all Saturday? Oh, he was fine. You know, that's – Hey, when you we don't when you're not getting what you want, number one way to get what you want is work harder. It's the way you respond. It's not what happens to you. It's the way you respond. What happens to you sometimes. So, you know, again, he's a young guy. Yeah, you know, and it, it's been tough. Probably his role's really changed from where it was to where it is now, and the position he's playing, not playing. Again, he's just he's got to get stronger, and no question, he's got to get tough. You know, I don't know if there's anything they did anything particularly. I think he had some shots, missed some shots, and you know, Davion's one of those guys that you know um, he probably plays better when he's just uh, when you're not trying to create him a shot, where he can just kind of jump up and make some things. Um, but just need him to be aggressive offensively, make those mid-range shots like he did old Old Dominion. Uh, if he can pull up and make a three. Made one against Old Dominion over there in the second half. Caught it in rhythm in the second half. Need him to make those kinds when he gets it. But, uh, again, you know, like I've told him, you can't put pressure on yourself to score. Think about the other things. Think about how hard you're going to play and let the scoring come to you. I mean, he's a natural scorer. Uh, but, again, he just needs to continue to be consistent with it. Kind of since you're putting on free throws down the stretch, and obviously Charles missed the, the pair uh, down two. We've been a good free throw shooting team. Charles has been a good free throw shooting team. You know, he missed one. He missed one on purpose. So we had enough confidence to get it to him. You know, we really thought it should have finished the play and should have been a three-point play. Then you go back with a one-point lead eight seconds ago, but he doesn't finish it and misses the first one. And uh, don't ask why that second one, why he thought what he thought at that time. So he didn't quite have an answer for that. But um, he's a good free throw shooter. I got confidence in Charles making free throws. Yes. Mike. Science. And I preface the question with uh, the, 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 the most important game is the next game, but three games heading into the conference terms of besides winning them, what's the number one thing that you 
want to get out of these three remaining games that you want to see from your players? Well, you know, you know, Mike, that's why that first game, uh, and I think it's a psychological part of where you're at now with some things. That's why two going to one first made no sense. It absolutely made no sense. Because if one wins on their home court, I mean, we're all human. You can look around you and every team can look around you. What's that do to Old Dominion? Where's that kind of separate them? You know, it takes a lot of chances away from everybody else. Uh, so again, now it's, I mean, mentally, you just got to be ready to play because it's the next opponent. Where you're playing for a championship and not playing for a championship. It's your next opponent and you got to play. And it comes such a mental thing now. You know, mentally, you know, being able to play because it's your next opponent and continue to play hard. That's going to be our challenge and our keys of uh, these next three games. Good. You know, that's good. We have good practices. You know, it's a good thing and a bad thing. Uh, I guess it's uh, it's bad we lost some games. But I think the positive things is, and all of us in this room know this, those games are all one possession games. Both times Old Dominion in those several other places. Both times Old Dominion, one possession games. <laughs> And Old Dominion's made that one possession. Uh, so it's not like it's, it's, uh, it's someone uh, that just drew on us, that's beating us 20, we got no chance against. So from that standpoint, your players understand that. They see that. You know? Uh, what can we do to make one more play? What can I do to get us one more stop? One more stop. What can I do to get us a stop with up three, Brad? A minute to go. What can I do? You know, that's, that's what a fine line the game is, winning and losing. Then you come back down with the tie game, 40 seconds go, they go to that TV camera over there for five minutes. Again, that's what a fine line it is. Fine line of winning and losing. Uh, so from that, I take some pauses from it. I take some pauses. And our guys haven't let that losing uh, take away from some confidence in what we can still do. I believe that. Mike, go ahead. Rick, I, uh, I'm asking this because I like you, and uh, you, you can obviously decline because of HIPAA laws, but just uh, you're back. And, and just, you know, I, I saw a picture of you on the stool. You know, how did you hold up with the travel, and, and, and did you have to do anything different? Hey, I can promise you, you know, my back had anything, nothing to do with winning and losing for sure. Uh, it is what it is. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm good, but we all know it's we're through the season, and uh, there's no time to, you know, sit down, prop your feet up, bub your head the way you really like to and probably need to. But, but I'm fine with that. I can, I can manage it. I can make it work. I can make it work, Mike. Last question I asked about the back Okay. Anything else? Uh, the conference yesterday put out their ballots for all conference and all that sort of thing, and they have Charles as a nominee for player of the year. Uh, as, as his coach, what kind of pitch would you make to voters to, to consider him for that award? You know, I've always been, always been a guy that's always said the player of the year and the best player of the year goes to the best team at the end of the year. That's where I've always been with it. Best team, best player that wins, to me always deserves, you know, the best player of the year. Uh, Charles has been very good for us. Very good. 15 11 is really good. Good stats. Um, if Old Dominion wins it, uh, hard to argue about stiff. I don't know who can make that argument with that. 18 or 19 a game and Senior been really good, so uh, you know it's whoever wins Old Dominion's seems to be the team. It's totally in the driver's seat to win it. Hard to go against uh, the best player being on the best team, uh, but very obvious. You know, Charles had a really good year for us. Is that good, guys?